want to give thanks to some folks who made this possible tonight. The Friends of the Thomas Crane Library are an awesome association. They run our bookstore when we're able to have one in the library and we can have people visit us. Um, but they are still meeting, uh, I think, virtually. They're definitely talking to each other and talking with us. Uh, and they are great supporters of the library. Um, if you don't know about the Friends, I'll put a link to them in the comments as well. Uh, but you can also go to our website, thomascranelibrary.org, and slash friends or go to the bottom left of the home page and you'll see a link for the friends. Um, they're just a fabulous organization that helps support these programs. I couldn't say enough words of thanks. And if you're not a friend yourself, I encourage you to be consider becoming one because it's really how we're able to bring these programs to you. Uh, we're also co-sponsoring tonight with the Boston Vegetarian Society. Um, I actually first met Colin through vegetarian uh, and vegan circles, uh, so it's really nice to be able to to, to kind of have this come uh, full circle. Uh, BVS is certainly a friend. We've hosted programs before with them uh, and partnered with them at the library. Uh, Colin is a vegan chef. Um, don't let that scare you. If you're not vegan or vegetarian, these are recipes that are great for all people. Uh, these are super flavorful, delicious recipes. Um, that will just, they really work for so many different people. And BVS has a wonderful folks um, that they like to attend their programs. And it was just a way to amplify this and to help share this awesome cooking that Colin is bringing. Welcome everybody to my kitchen. Uh, what you see here is pretty much half of my kitchen. So, you know, I don't have some big fancy, uh, I would love that, but I don't have some big fancy kitchen with which to, uh, you know, make these things. So, you know, point being, uh, you know, you don't have to have some kind of a fancy setup to be able to make these recipes that uh, like what we're going to do tonight and what we did the last couple of classes. So I've been vegan for about 25 years now. I have two boys who are uh, 17 and 21 um, and they have always been vegan as well. So, you know, I always say it's one thing for me to try and eat healthy and uh you know, but, you know, to try and get my kids to eat healthy food, uh, you know, that's, that's been also, uh, that has been a challenge. So certainly when I, you know, develop recipes and find recipes that, um, you know, get the kids to eat really healthy food and ask for more, then I know that I've, I've hit on some good things. So uh, I have written the Healthy Vegan Cookbook, uh, which is here backwards probably, but um, uh, I this came out last year. Uh, this was published and that's available on Amazon. So you can find it on there. Uh, make Jeff Bezos a little more money there. Uh, so in the cookbook, um, it's sort of a general cookbook. I have a lot of different smoothie recipes, uh, about 30 different smoothies. So we did those a couple weeks ago. I have 30 different sauce recipes to, you know, put all kinds of different sauces on different uh, whole grain uh, bowl meals. Um, and then uh, tonight we're going to be doing healthy desserts. So you'll see, um, like in the, in the recipes that we've talked about so far, and certainly the ones that we do tonight, what's in the cookbook, um, I don't really do a lot of kind of copycat recipes where, like, I'm not trying to make the healthy version of, um, you know, chocolate chip cookies or something like that, you know, something that really is inherently not healthy. Delicious, yes, but, you know, really not very healthy. I found that, you know, trying to make the healthy version of that, you keep swapping out, you know, different uh, ingredients to try and make it a little bit healthier. And in the end, it just becomes this like Frankenstein's monster, this weird thing, uh, you know, where if you give it to somebody who's, who's not really health conscious and they're going to say, what the heck is that? You know, it's, it's awful cookie. So I don't really get into, um, you know, in the cookbook, I didn't really write a lot of recipes like that. These are really kind of like standalone recipes. They're not trying to be something else. Um, they certainly are inspired by different flavors from other things, but um, you know, I think it's better for me anyway. I prefer to have uh, things that are not trying to be something else that are just kind of great on their own. So uh, like we were saying, I am vegan. Uh, I do try to be uh, whole food as much as possible. So I don't really like to have a lot of processed stuff um, you know, just my preference, but that's really what makes me feel the healthiest uh, is to not really use any sugar, um, you know, use a pretty limited or no oil um, and, you know, cut back the salt. So, you know, when you make all this stuff at home, then you have control over what goes into your food and you can use uh, certainly more whole food, healthy ingredients. So that's kind of where I'm coming from with that. So tonight we're going to be doing four different recipes. 
Um, I've done this class a lot in person. Um, this is always the class that, you know, when I'm handing out samples to everybody, then my kids always tell me, you know, please hand out like the smallest samples possible, just selfishly so that they can eat as much as they can. Uh, you know, they love these treats. Um, in the cookbook, I actually call this um, chapter that has these dessert recipes in them, uh, Healthy Snacks. And my publisher said, where's the dessert chapter? It's, it's Healthy Snacks. Because if you make desserts really healthy, then you can have them as a snack. You can have them for breakfast. You know, it's not, it's not uh, starting your day off with junk food or something like that. So uh, actually two... Two of these recipes tonight will be from the cookbook. I do have a lot of different uh, healthy dessert recipes in the book. Uh, and then two are going to be ones uh, uh, that are not in the book. So uh, why don't we get started? First recipe we're going to do is um, apple spice bites. So this is one that's not in the book. Actually, I wrote this um, a couple months ago when I first started quarantine. And, uh, you know, uh, you have like apple spice muffins or, you know, things like that, uh, you know, apple spice bread. And I thought, you know, is there a way that I can make um, basically what's like a date ball where you use dates and, you know, some seeds and things? Um, is there a way to make this uh, with the same combination of, of spices and everything so it tastes the same, but it's actually in a much healthier form? So uh, why don't we start out? So also, I just wanted to point out, uh, for this, um, I'm going to be using a food processor. This is the Cuisinart, um, Cuisinart Elite. It's, got a, it's more of a commercial uh, food processor. It has a 14 cup capacity. It's very heavy. <laughs> uh, I, I don't, you know, whether you use this or a different kind of food processor, I would recommend something that has a large capacity. So like I said, this one, 14 cups. Uh, you know, I used to have a, a much smaller food processor and, you know, these recipes that have to like, you know, break it down into like thirds and like do it in batches and that's such a pain in the neck. It's so much easier if you have a really large capacity one, you can just put it all in, let the, uh, let the food processor do all the work. And so in this one, we're going to start with a cup of quick oats. Uh, so I have everything measured out. I just need to pour it in. Um, quick oats are really going to help to absorb a lot of the moisture in these recipes. Um, uh, you know, typically in uh, these like kind of date ball recipes, I prefer to have the quick oats rather than the regular standard uh, rolled oats just because it's already kind of broken down some and it's, it's just easier to work with in this recipe. So there's one cup of the quick oats. We'll put in one cup of dried apples. Uh, so these are dehydrated apples. I just put them on the cutting board and kind of rough chop them up so they're into little pieces here. So that gives it a really great texture as you're, as you're chewing. Get little pieces of that. Uh, we're going to put in half a cup of unsweetened applesauce. So I just got this at Trader Joe's. Uh, you know, I would always get the big jar of applesauce and really use a lot of it at a time, so then it would start to go bad. Um, it's so much more convenient to me to buy it in these little cups. These are a half a, a cup serving size anyway, as it is, so I don't have to measure anything. Um, so this way, you know, when I am just need a little bit of applesauce, I have it right there on the shelf. It's, it's shelf-stable, doesn't have to go in the fridge, so that's what I prefer to use. So... That's a half a cup there. Okay. We're going to put in half a cup of pecans. So these are raw. Uh, I don't like to use uh, salted or roasted or anything unless uh, the recipe is really specifically calling for the roasted nut flavor. So this is just going to be a half a cup of pecans there. And there's going to be eight medjool dates. So uh, for most things, I like to use dates for sweetener because it's really the only whole food sweetener uh, that you can get. So, you know, unlike sugar or honey or maple syrup or something that's really been processed a lot, uh, this is a whole food form of sweetener. Uh, there's two different kinds that you typically would find in a supermarket. There's the medjool dates, which are larger. Usually they have a pit in it. Um, and then there's the deglet noir date, which are uh, the smaller ones that are usually pitted. So... You can use either one. I prefer to use the medjool dates because 
they're larger and they're they're softer on the inside. They're chewier. Um, I, again, Trader Joe's. I don't I don't get paid by them, but we should did. Uh, so then there's uh, going to be eight dates in here. So you know between the nuts and the, the dates and everything, uh, people ask about, um, you know, there, gee, there seem to be a lot of calories. Um, there's some fat and everything in these. And I always say, you know, I design all of my recipes to be really rich. So, um, you know, yes, there's a lot of calories if you ate the whole thing, but you really wouldn't, you know, you'd have like two or three of these. And like I said, they're really rich. They're filling just, you know, as a snack like that. You're not going to, it's not like Oreos, you're going to sit there and like eat, you know, the whole plate full of them. You have like two or three and that's fine. It's satisfying. You, you really, for me anyway, I don't want to eat more than that. Uh, I just really enjoy those few. So um, in addition to those, I'm going to put in a combination of different spices that I put together here. Um, there's a teaspoon of cinnamon. There's a quarter teaspoon of ground nutmeg. There's a quarter teaspoon of orange zest. Uh, so the orange zest, like in a small amount, just a quarter teaspoon, you really don't taste it. Um, it just kind of gives it like a really nice background flavor to it. So, you know, you really want the apple flavor to stand out here. So just a little bit of orange zest. Uh, an eighth of a teaspoon of ground cloves, because a little bit of cloves goes a long way. An eighth of a teaspoon of allspite, allspice, and a half a teaspoon of sea salt, which is optional. You don't have to put that in if you don't want, but I like just a little bit of salt to kind of bump up the taste a little bit. So there's all the spices already measured out. And I'm gonna go ahead and run this in the food processor just for a few minutes. Uh, it'll probably take about two minutes just to kind of break everything down. And um, Clayton can take over the uh, excellent commentary while I'm I'm doing that, so you'd all, all have to listen to that. So I'll go ahead and do that. All right. So while Colin does his blending there, uh, there is one question that was, uh, somebody has posted on a chat to me, uh, which I'll ask Colin when we come back up. But there's a couple of other things I just want to let people know. Um, I shared at the top of the chat. Maybe now is a decent time to share again uh, the link for these recipes. Um, so I'll put that again. You can follow along and, and print these if you'd like. Um, I also wanted to give a shout out. Um, no disrespect to Trader Joe's. I've gotten lots of great stuff from there, but I know in Quincy, we're very proud of our health food store at Good Health. Um, and we also have, you know, the home of Stop and Shop. We've got a lot of local shopping, shopping options. So you can get a lot of these ingredients um, very easily. We've got Can Man. We've got some really great shopping resources uh, in Quincy. So uh, I want to give some some local uh, shout outs to them. And uh, in the chat stream, I, I've put a link to the to, to Good Health because uh, that's you know, it's just such a great local indie store. Um, but I guess I have to give a shout out to Stop and Shop because there's certainly a community anchor there too. Um, Colin, as you're wrapping up there, some of the questions uh, that have come up, um, there was some concern uh, that was raised earlier about just the, the waste involved with the little cups with applesauce, which is one of the trade-offs, obviously. It's, do you have spoiled and, you know, do you use glass? Do you, I, I, I'd love to make my own applesauce, which is great, but that is a trade-off. People need to figure out where they, where they stand there. There's certainly a convenience to having um, those yep. individual containers for sure. Um, Another option is you could freeze it as well if you had the jar and you want to put it into little uh, ice cube trays and then, um, mm -hmm. you know, just freeze that and keep them in a Ziploc bag. You could do that too. Yeah, and I think uh, in one of the previous ones, you showed actually using like one of those, uh, the silicon ice cube trays that are yes. much easier to pop things out of. That's a really good idea. Mm -hmm. um, there was a question about whether you dehydrate your own apples or if you buy them dehydrated. Obviously, dehydrating them yourself takes a little bit of time. Right, it does. Um, you know, I don't, this isn't a recipe that I'm going to make all the time. So um, it's really not worth it to me to dehydrate, you know, my own fruit that way. Um, and uh, having the dehydrator and everything, it's, it's, it's just more convenient for me to get it from the store for the times that I would want to use it. Yep. But if somebody comes across a bushel and wants to share some apples with us, we'll figure out how to dehydrate them. We don't <laughs> want them to go bad. That's right. Um, another question was if the recipes have information on calories, protein, carbs, fat, that kind of thing. Um, and the answer is in the printout, they're not there. I don't know if you've done research, though, into the kind of nutritional content uh, about uh, of your recipes. Is that something you've looked into? Uh, I have done some of that just on my own outside of the book. Um, I didn't include that in the book because really, you know, there are a number of different factors that, that go into those, um, you know, 
also whether it's organic or not, um, you know, I, I just didn't really feel like it was something that uh, it was important to me to put in. Uh, also, you know, as far as something like this, if you, if you, you know, see that, then you might, you might be scared of it and say like, wow, there's a lot of calories in that. But again, like, you know, I am not eating the whole batch of this. I'm only eating a few at a time. So, you know, I also don't want to scare anybody off by, you know, seeing the, the, uh, the fat and the calories and say, oh my God, I wouldn't want to eat that. No. Um, you know, there's definitely also a lot of debate in the nutritional world. Uh, a lot of the vegan doctors talk about, you know, the research that's been done on, uh, you know, fat is not fat is not fat, you know, in terms of calories. Uh, you know, if you're getting your, your fat and calories from nuts, it's, it's very different than if you were to get that from oil. You know, if you get that from sources that your body knows what to do with, like, you know, nuts and seeds and things like that, uh, it's going to be, a, you know, totally different than if you were to get, um, you know, your fat from uh, margarine or butter and oil and things like that, that has been really processed, uh, that your body might not really know what to do with that. So, uh, you know, it's definitely an interesting topic. You know, there's a lot of hot, uh, hot debate on that that I don't really get onto, um, you know, on the internet. But uh, there's, there's a lot of great stuff about that. So it was actually, I just need to run this one more time just for like okay. great. seconds and I'll be all done. Go for it. So the other question that uh, maybe if you can hear me, Colin, you can ask when, when you're done running that. Uh, there was somebody who was asking about orange zest. And uh, if you, you know, zest your own oranges, um, I guess I've never even heard. They mentioned a dehydrated orange zest and whether you've ever used that. Um, every time I've ever needed zest from an orange or a lemon, I've always just, you know, had a, a fruit in my hand and a little microplane and, and created my own. But what do you, what, what's your experience with different zests? Um, I usually just have an orange or a lemon or, you know, lime or whatever it is that I need. I usually just have one laying around. So um, I also use the microfine planer to zest that as well. Um, so, you know, one thing I would like to point out with that, though, if you are going to use the zest of different uh, citrus fruits, then that's one you, you really want to make sure that you're using organic for that so you're not getting the chemicals from that. So that's, that, that's one thing where it's really important. Have you ever used dehydrated zest? Is that something you have any experience with? Uh, I haven't, no. Uh, I mean, I, I suppose that would be a, a convenient way to do it, but, you know, I also like, as you zest something um, fresh, then it releases all of the um, natural oils and everything, the fragrance is really, is really great. So, yeah. um, you know, I, I just use the fresh because it's convenient to me, but if, uh, you know, dehydrated is something that you have and that's more convenient to you, then you definitely use that too. Yep. Cool. Thanks. So if people have further questions, I am watching both, uh, you know, comments here in Zoom, uh, but I'm also watching and I've been posting some things to uh, Facebook and to, uh, to YouTube. So we okay. haven't had any questions across those streams, but I'm just kind of putting this out there uh, to encourage if anybody who's watching us on those streams would like to ask questions, uh, let them know that I'm paying attention to them. So thanks, Colin. Let's, let's keep going. That's great. All right. All right. So the mix comes out to be, you know, kind of a, like a dough and a paste almost here. You can see that. Um, so I usually pull off enough to make about an inch, like a one inch kind of golf ball size, uh, roll it up in my hands. Uh, of course, when I'm doing classes, uh, in person then I use gloves, but you know, here in my own kitchen, um, considering that I get to eat all of these myself and I don't have to share them, uh, then I don't, <laughs> I don't have gloves on today. So this is about what it comes out like. So, you know, you can see there in the camera, uh, everything's broken down pretty well. You're going to have, you know, little, little pieces of the dehydrated apple uh, is going to be there when you bite in, um, you know, but the dates and the nuts and everything are going to be all chopped up. So uh, also one thing that I would, would recommend if you wanted to add uh, some kind of a seed to this recipe, uh, hemp seeds would work really, work really well here. Um, you know, if you want to throw in a tablespoon or two into the, uh, the mix um, as part of the recipe, then hemp seeds are a great source of nutrition and they don't really have a very strong taste. So they would just kind of blend in. We're going to actually be using some of those in one of the other recipes. So we'll get to that. But so I'm going to put the rest of this mixture into a bowl and just kind of put it aside because you guys don't need to, you know, sit there and watch me roll up uh, 20 of 
it usually makes about uh, 16 or 20 of these. So just kind of take these out and save that until after the class is over. All right, and uh, I'm just gonna wash up the food processor and get ready for the next recipe. Do they need to sit or could you start snacking on that dough right now on those balls? Oh yeah, oh, yeah you could. Yeah, so usually what I do with these is, you know, oh, it's so good. Um, I roll them into the <laughs> uh, roll them into the one inch uh, ball size. Uh, put them on a plate in the uh, refrigerator. Um, you know they can kind of firm up a little bit. The medjool dates. You know once they get cool and the, the pecans. Once they get cool, then they're going to kind of firm up. And then I would put these into a ziploc bag. Put them in the freezer. And then you know anytime I come home from work or my kids come come home through the door, they're famous for you know, coming through the door and saying, what do we have to eat? So, you know, I have something like that all the time, something that's, you know, really sweet, that's dessert-like, but it's really healthy. So, you know, if they have some before dinner, then that's fine. It's all healthy ingredients. I don't mind if they want to have a couple. Um, no more than a couple because, you know, I don't want to share that much, but I don't know. Mm. Also, it's nice uh, having my being in my kitchen here. We uh, my sink is right next to the to the whole setup, so I don't have to run this into another room and have somebody clean it for me. This is a great example. If uh, you know you don't have to have one of those super fancy kitchens like we see on TV, um, that doesn't look like a very big kitchen that you're working in. Um, so. You know, hopefully we can encourage everybody to try this out with whatever they've got. You know, you're using you know, some pretty basic uh, means, which I think is really fabulous. It's we're demonstrating that you can eat some awesome food with a pretty small yeah. footprint. It's very cool. I actually uh, I made a number of recipe videos and put them on my YouTube page, um, and um, you know I I kind of set it up like a studio with an overhead um, and like I'm not in it, just my hands and. Uh, you know, so I actually took a picture of the whole setup from the side and you could see like how small and, you know, how <laughs> it, it kind of looks like a whole studio, but it's actually not at all. It's not impressive at all. So, all right, so we'll move on to the next one. I'll go ahead and put a, a, a link to the recipes here in the chat streams again in case people joined us late and would like to follow along or, or miss the link the first time too. Recipe is actually probably my kids' favorite recipe from the book, from the cookbook. And I have about 200 recipes in the book. So this one, number one for them, um, this is the orange chocolate energy bites. So this is one where, you know, my son goes to college in Boston. He actually asked me to make these and, and ship them <laughs> to him because <laughs> he likes them so much. Um, some people have told me these kind of taste like uh, orange Tootsie Rolls. So uh, I like, yeah, that's right. It sounds about right. So in this one, uh, this one calls for uh, two cups of medjool dates. So there's a lot of sweetener in here. It's pretty sweet. Um, two cups is about uh, eight, uh, sorry, 16 pitted dates. Uh, you definitely want to make sure that there's no pits in these a food processor is just gonna break them down into smaller pit sizes and you'll get a really terrible crunch when you bite into these. So uh, this one has a cup and a half of raw cashews here. So I'm gonna say again, um, you know, of yes, there's a cup and a half of cashews. It's a lot of nuts. There's definitely a fair amount of fat and calories, but you're only eating a couple of these at a time. And like I said, they're so rich, you know, you'll really enjoy those two or three, and then you're probably going to be done. You're not going to want more than that. So there's a cup and a half. So I always tell people, like, don't be scared. <laughs> uh, I'm going to do three quarters of a cup of raisins here. Put that in as well. All right. And then I'm going to put in a quarter of a cup of cacao. Uh, so this is cacao powder. Uh, it's basically like cocoa powder, but this is the raw 
uh, uncooked version of cocoa powder. So if uh, cocoa powder is what you have, then you can just use this, um, use cocoa powder, it's fine. Um, I, like the, I like to use things that are less processed if I can. Uh, so I'm gonna put in a quarter of a cup of the cacao powder. This might be something that it's more of a specialty ingredient. If you really wanted to get the cacao powder, uh, you probably would need to go to Trader Joe's or Whole Foods or um, the health store in Quincy. I'm sure they would have this as well. Um, uh, I haven't been able to find this so much at regular supermarkets. They usually just have the cocoa powder. Um, you know, it's shelf stable, so you can order it online as well. If you can't get to a store, uh, it's easy to get online. So, um, you know, when people say chocolate is good for you, um, they're sort of right. <laughs> so it's, it is not entirely wishful thinking. Uh, chocolate actually does have a lot of um, uh, antioxidants and, you know, and health properties to it. Um, besides making you feel really good because chocolate is awesome, um, it's the cacao, it's, it's the cocoa part of the chocolate that has all those health benefits. So, you know, you take uh, the cocoa, cacao, and you add a bunch of fat and a bunch of sugar to it and you make chocolate. So, you know, with this, we have, you know, this is the thing that's giving it the chocolate taste and it has all the nutrition uh, in it. So we're just going to use this. So there's the cacao. And then in this one, you kind of have an option of being able to use, um, uh, you, if you have zest of an orange, if you have an orange available, then that's great. If not, you could use a teaspoon of orange extract, which is fine. So I have the extract here. And this one, I did put in a half a cup of hemp seeds. So, uh, you know, you have chia seeds and flax seeds. Those are great seeds. I use those all the time in smoothies, but in a recipe like this, um, um, you know, those, those two kinds of seeds are kind of hard. I guess you could mill them, um, you know, grind them down so that it's more of a powder, but I really like to use hemp seeds in this recipe. They're very soft. Like I said, they don't have a really strong taste, but they are loaded with nutrition. It's really good for you. So hemp seeds, hemp hearts, same, same thing, I believe. So put some seeds in there. Um, and then I'm going to put in, this is a quarter teaspoon of espresso powder. So uh, if you were watching the smoothie video, you might remember this is a little ingredient I put in. Espresso powder is just um, ground espresso beans. This one is totally optional, but I really like to use in chocolate recipes. I use just a little bit of espresso powder. There's a quarter of a teaspoon here. In this recipe, you're really not going to taste the espresso powder. Um, you know, it's not going to have any kind of coffee flavor to it at all. In a tiny little bit, this is like the baker's secret um, in chocolate recipes. If you add just a little bit, it kind of boosts the taste of the chocolate, makes it richer. Um, but um, in a tiny little bit, you don't actually taste that. So I'm going to put that in. Um, and this is one that, um, honestly, whenever I buy it, I usually just get it online uh, on Amazon. I think King Arthur makes one that I, that's usually what I get. And I, I just put it in the refrigerator and you only use it a little bit at a time. And uh, so it takes me a long time to go through all of it. So. As we've been making your smoothies in our house, Colin, we've just been throwing in a couple of espresso, like, uh, coffee beans uh, and just grinding them up or just using coffee powder, like basically just grinding it just super fine um, because we haven't gone out and bought fancy espresso powder yet. So it's been working pretty well, too. Okay. Yeah, you can do that, too. Yeah. Yeah. And also, some people have asked me, um, you know, concerns about the uh, caffeine uh, from using es the espresso powders like that. Um, you know, I'm only putting in a quarter of a teaspoon. That's got to be just like a couple of beans. It's really not much at all. So, you know, if you're super, super sensitive to caffeine, you may want to skip that. You know, it's, it's, it's not going to make it that much different. If you don't put it in, it just makes it a little bit richer. So, all right. So this one, I'm going to go ahead and mix this up. And so with this one, you always know it, it's ready because um, it has a lot of the, the dates in it. As it blends together and it becomes more mixed and homogenous, then it all kind of starts to stick together and it's just like one ball that just goes around and around. So you probably see that this is going to need to run for a minute or two here. 
I'll go ahead and do my little song and dance here and, and tell you what folks have been saying. Um, I learned something fascinating as you were speaking, in addition from you. Uh, one of our participants tonight let me know that you can actually find, um, I believe it was cacao powder sometimes at Marshall's um, and at TJ Maxx, which I had no idea. I don't spend a lot of time in those stores, um, but they have a lot of good food items. Um, they have flax, they've got hemp seeds, they've got uh, some great vegan protein powders um, at awesome prices too, apparently. Um, but it's just, you know, it's not reliable when they'll definitely have certain things. So it can be hit or miss when you're gonna find things, but um, that's really cool. Um, there were, uh, I, and I'm also here that uh, Costco also has cacao powder. That's really cool. Um, a couple of folks are wondering if you've ever used a Vitamix to do this mixing instead of a food processor. Um, so once it's done blending, maybe you want to talk about that. Uh, and then, oh, you have stopped, so go ahead. Oh, that's, that's a great question. So I'm going to stop that. Um, not that the rest of them are great questions, but um, people do ask me that a lot. And that's a really important one. Um, you know, Vitamix, it's going to be really hard to do this recipe. So Vitamix is great as a blender. That's really what it's built for. It can do lots of, you know, soups and smoothies and sauces, but, you know, it's really supposed to be for liquid things. Um, I know that it can do nut butters and things like that. Um, I really feel like you're really pushing the motor and, you know, really pushing it to the point where it might overheat and shut down. Um, you know, my Vitamix, uh, I have a couple of them. Um, because I teach in classes and, and whatnot and bring it. But, um, you know, I have one that's lasted 20 years and it's still going. And that's because, you know, I kind of baby it. And I don't try to make it do things that it's not really designed for. A food processor, like this is what it does. Grinds all day long. This is never going to overheat with some nuts and, you know, dates and, you know, things like that. But, you know, in a Vitamix, you probably can do it, but it's going to be it's going to be really hard on the motor. So I would say if you have a food processor, it's much better to use the food processor for this. Cool. Thanks. I do know that um, I have friends who've got a Vitamix and they were milling flour with it and they actually had a special, like there's a different bowl and a whole, like, a, like you use the base, but they have a different top. Um, but I haven't seen something that does like a food processor. And so I think they're, it's kind of like you wouldn't use it as a whole bar, a big stand mixer either. Those are, those do different things too. Right. So, yeah. um, one other question that came across, there was somebody who uh, I think hadn't done much with uh, citrus zest before uh, and we're wondering exactly how you do it. And um, obviously you and I talked about having, I don't know if you have um, your microplane there that you zest with, if you could show people what that looks like. Um, but I wonder if there's any other techniques if people don't have that, um, that you would recommend. So yeah, if you, you, could you know, use, before you got a uh, Sure. Um, you know, you could definitely use the orange extract as well instead of the zest if you want to. That gives it a, a nice strong orange flavor. Um, as far as the zest goes, there's the, the little zester, the little handheld zester that you can use. Or if you have um, like a, a knife with a little serrated edge to it, then you can kind of scrape some of the zest off that way. Um, one, one thing that you would, I would want to point out if you're going to zest uh, you know, any kind of citrus is you want to make sure that you're only taking off the top layer of the zest because that white pith that's underneath, uh, that's really bitter. Uh, so you really want to just kind of scrape off that top layer where all the, the zest is. Yep. This is almost done, I promise. <laughs> I'm reminded uh, when I was, you know, growing up, I remember going to the mall and we'd go to Orange Julius. So that was always the treat. And I remember they had these big tubes where they would have oranges and the orange would like, you know, shoot down the chute into the blender. And uh, you'd like talk about zest. when I mean, you got everything. You got that bitterness. And I still make smoothies that way. And my kids hate it because it's like, oh, Dad, you put the whole orange in there. What are you doing? Um, so, yeah, you're definitely more refined and leaving that white piece out. But, you know, if we want to do a throwback to Orange Julius, we can, you can do the whole bit and, and just kind of, you got to embrace yeah. it, I guess. Well, you know, one thing that my kids pointed out um, with this one is, uh, you know, the ingredients, you look at these and it's, it's really similar. Like if I was going to make a chocolate orange smoothie, then these are really pretty much the same ingredients, maybe, you know, a few different proportions, but, um, you know, very similar ingredients to what I would make for a smoothie. So uh, one time my, my older son asked me, you know, if you're like in a hurry, can you just drop four of these with like two cups of water into the blender 
and then just make a smoothie out of that. And I said, you know, if you're quick on the go and uh, you have that, then sure, you could do that. Yeah. So here, again, it's kind of a paste, like a doughy paste here. And so I roll that into about an inch golf ball size here. So you can see, uh, you know, you can see it's, it's very brown from the dates and the cacao powder. Uh, you know, there's gonna be little flecks of white, which is the uh, cashews and the hemp seeds, but um, you know, that's about it. So again, put these in a plate. Uh, right now, these are pretty soft, um, but if you put them on a plate and put them in the fridge, uh, then the dates and the nuts and everything are going to kind of firm up and then you can put these in the freezer. I think personally, I think these actually are best right out of the freezer. Uh, so it's not going to be like a chunk of ice. Um, you know, it's still going to be uh, nice and smooth, uh, but I love them right out of the freezer. And like I said, it's always great to have that on hand when my kids come home and they're uh, going right to the, right to the freezer or refrigerator to see if there are any in there. Uh, how how sticky are those in your hand? It didn't look like it was sticking to your fingers at all. No, no. With uh, with a cup and a half of cashews, then there's there's a fair amount of fat in these. So <laughs> they do not stick to your hands. Uh, if you uh, take them out of the house, if you want to take them over to a friend's house or just carry with you, them with you throughout the day, um, do you are they are they pretty? You know, would you put them in a cold pack or do something to carry them? Nope. Just throw them yep. in your pocket and pull them out when you're ready. Yeah. Um, I'll usually put them in like a little Tupperware thing so that they're protected and they don't get squashed or something like that. But, um, you know, these are two things like this and the apple spice um, bites. Uh, this is something like I really enjoy, uh, you know, myself and my kids really enjoy it. But like these two things would not be something that I would necessarily bring to like a potluck or a group because... Uh, you know, I've had too many people say like, oh, that's a donut hole. You know, they think it's a donut hole and then they bite into it and they're like, whoa, that's totally different. So, um, you know, just because it's so different from what people are expecting, then, um, you know, put a little sign <laughs> in the front of it. Uh, but, you know, back uh, before I um, became vegan, um, I was vegetarian for a year, uh, 26 years ago. And uh, it wasn't until I became vegetarian that I had heard of the term vegan. Um, and, you know, when I first heard about it, I said, like, so they don't eat cheese or, you know, like no dairy or anything. Like, what do they eat? Like nuts and seeds all day, you know? And then, you know, you have a recipe like this. This is nuts and seeds, you know? It's got the dates in it too and everything. But, you know, this has got a lot of nuts and seeds in it. And... Um, you know, when you can make nuts and seeds that taste, you know, the orange chocolate energy bites, it, it tastes like a dessert, then, you know, yes, okay, it's nuts and seeds, but it tastes amazing. So I don't mind so much, you know, it's not like I'm a squirrel eating nuts and seeds all day. It can, uh, in a different form, it can be pretty amazing. So uh, I have two more recipes and... Um, when I do the live classes uh, at libraries, then these ones I always make ahead of time um, because they do require using the stove. And, um, you know, for me to do that in the class, um, it it's certainly adds a layer of complexity. And also once you cook it, it has to go in the refrigerator for a while and cool down. So, uh, you know, certainly in an hour and a half class that it uh, pushes the, the time, time constraints. Uh, so what I did in this, in this case, um, I really wanted to be able to go over these um, because, you know, there are some really instructive parts to these two recipes. Um, you could also say I really wanted to eat these all by myself. So I also had an extra excuse, extra motivation to make these tonight, but did make them ahead of time. Um, so the, the first one, uh, lemon tartlets. Um, this is not in the cookbook. This is not um, my recipe. So um, this one, you'll, you'll see it in the notes and everything. You have a question? 
Yeah, I just before we moved too far uh, past what we were just talking about, there was one question which we've talked about in some of the smoothie classes, um, but it was about the cashews that you were using in that recipe and whether or not you soaked them. Um, oh, they did not uh, look soaked. But... Um, no, I didn't soak them in this recipe. Um, you know, a food processor is is going to be able to handle uh, cashews pretty easily without them having to be soaked. Um, cashews are, are really one of the, the softest uh, kinds of nuts that you can use as opposed to, you know, like walnuts or almonds or something like that. So, um, you know, certainly cashews are going to break down easily. The only thing I would say as far as soaking would be uh, if you have a sensitivity to nuts, um, you know, if it just kind of make your, makes your insides go a little haywire, um, sometimes soaking uh, nuts overnight will actually pull out a lot of the phytic acid that um, for some people is a little hard to, to digest for nuts. Um, if you're allergic to nuts, it's not going to make any difference. It's not going to help at all. So that's, you know, that's, that's not going to be good. But um, soaking them would make them a little bit easier to digest if you have a sensitivity. To them. Cool. Thanks. Now let's talk about lemon tartlets. I can't wait. All right. <laughs> so... You know, I said the, the, the last two recipes, you know, were not something that I would normally bring to a, um, a cookout or a party or, you know, a, a potluck or something like that. Uh, these two next recipes, absolutely, I would bring these and I always have a lot of people uh, really enjoy them. So uh, lemon tarts, these ones, uh, I actually I'll get the, the pan right here. Uh, I like to use a little tart, tartlet pan. Uh, so this is made by uh, Wilson. Uh, so you can either make this in a large uh, tart, like, uh, you know, several inches, uh, or you can make little mini ones. So, you know, in my case, like if I want to bring this to a potluck or something, then I like to have the little mini ones here. So uh, this is a nonstick tray. Uh, it's easier to be able to get them in and out of that. Uh, but like I said, I'm not going to go ahead and make the recipe now, but I will kind of walk through the recipe. Uh, you know, if anybody is, is looking at the printed recipes, then there's just, there are a couple of specialty ingredients we can talk about and, uh, you know, just kind of the process of it. So again, you know, trying to make uh, desserts more from a whole food perspective, unprocessed perspective, um, I'm trying to make, uh, this one has an oatmeal cookie crust to it, um, and then the lemon curd uh, inside the filling. So as far as the oatmeal cookie crust, um, I've used two tablespoons of coconut manna. Uh, so that is this right here. This is a Nativa brand. So coconut manna is different from coconut oil or you know any of those other processed products. Coconut manna is just pure coconut. It's, there's nothing taken out of it. It's basically, you know, you can make your own if you wanted to. You could put, um, you know, fresh coconut meat or you could put, um, you know, the shredded coconut in the food processor. Um, if you just let it run and keep scraping it down, then eventually in like 15 or, or 10 or 15 minutes, it will make um, coconut manna, uh, which is, you know, it's just like if you were to make peanut butter or something, it's just breaking it down to the point where, um, you know, there's really not much pulp in it left. It's really smooth and creamy. So, um, you know, from a, a whole food perspective of, you know, uh, I, I read once that uh, coconuts are one of the few things that if you were on a desert island and all you could eat for two months or three months was coconuts, then you could survive on that. Um, you would get really sick of coconuts, I'm sure. But, um, you know, unlike anything else, uh, coconuts are, are actually very healthy. They do have a lot of fat. Um, and then if you were to, you know, pull all the fiber and, and um, you know, extract where it's just a pure oil, coconut oil, um, then that's really not going to be very healthy for you. Um, again, debates online rage about, you know, is coconut oil healthy for you or not? Um, from my perspective, I don't really like to use oil. So any form of oil, it, it, it's an extracted thing. It's, you know, the highest um, amount of calories you can eat, you know, in a tablespoon of something. So um, I like to use the coconut manna. So this one you can get, this is a specialty ingredient. Uh, 
you know, health food stores, I have this. Um, I'll, this is something that like, I don't go to Whole Foods every, every month. Um, you know, I usually go every couple of months just to get the specialty ingredients. I usually buy a couple of jars of the coconut manna at a time. And uh, this I can just put on the shelf. Um, it's shelf stable, you know, lasts a really long time. And uh, so I usually use it for desserts. I don't, I don't usually take it out for anything else, but um, I put in two tablespoons. There's a question, Colin. Mm -hmm. Does a coconut manna have any adhesive properties? Does it hold things together or, you know, what kind of role is it playing? Um, it's, it's making it uh, creamier. So like in, in a crust, you're going to want some kind of fat so that it's not really dry. Um, so the uh, coconut manna is good for that. Uh, also, I use a third of a cup of pecans as well. Um, I'm going to put in one cup of rolled oats, half a cup of unsweetened shredded coconut, seven pitted dates, uh, the zest of one lemon, and I put in a quarter of a teaspoon of sea salt. So all of that would go in the food processor and, you know, just process that for a minute or two just to really break it down into, the, into a, a really, like, crumbly crust and into that uh, I will put that into the tart pan and I will basically just kind of press it into each one of these here so this recipe is enough for um, the 12 little tartlets here or if you like I said if you have um, uh, like tart cups usually those are um, like four or five inches and uh, you know you would have like maybe four to six of those instead of the, the tiny ones. Um, but then there wouldn't be as many to share with your friends. So uh, I press the crust into that and then I put that in the oven, um, bake that at 350 degrees for about 10 minutes. Um, that's really gonna help to make the crust uh, nice and firm, um, really kind of give it a um, it's, it kind of comes out almost like an oatmeal cookie, you know, kind of crumble consistency. Um, as far as the lemon curd goes, um, I would add uh, the juice of two to three lemons. So uh, two lemons is great for most people. If you really like strong, intense lemon flavor, then go for three. Uh, sometimes I'll do three in a class and warn everybody and then, you know, just this is a fun one to pass around samples and people be like, whoa, that is really strong, but it's great. Uh, so in this one, I really need the curd to be um, thick, you know, to thicken up. Uh, so I would put in two thirds of a cup of the uh, coconut manna for this. Um, again, like this is not something that you're gonna eat all 12 of them, so, you know, uh, two thirds of a cup of coconut manna is, is going to be a fair amount of, of fat, but you know, you're only going to eat one and then you share the rest with your friends. Um, so this is going to be into a little saucepan on the stove. You put in um, the juice of the lemons, you put in two thirds of a cup of the coconut manna. Um, so the recipe that, that I got this from, um, that was not mine. It called for two thirds of a cup of coconut cream. Um, which is you take um, you take the pure fat from uh, making coconut oil. Um, you know, like if you opened up a, a can of coconut milk and at the top it's congealed, then coconut cream is just like all of that. It's just it's just the thick part. Um, and again, that's really it's a process extracted. You know, pure fat. Um, it tastes great, but um, in this case, I would really rather much use. Uh, whole food products, I'll use the coconut cream. Um, if you were going to, or coconut manna, if you're going to use coconut cream instead of coconut manna, um, then you would have to add two tablespoons of cornstarch to thicken it up on the stove. But with the manna, you don't have to do that. It thickens itself. Um, uh, in this recipe, I put in a quarter of a cup of agave nectar. This is one of the few recipes that I use agave nectar for because like I said, I don't really like to use processed sugar if I can. Agave nectar is, um, you know, not, not especially healthy, really. Um, but in this recipe, I do use it for the lemon curd, because if you were going to use any kind of dates, um, then it would certainly make it a lot darker, and it would be hard to still make it uh, creamy. So uh, use agave nectar. 
And then one teaspoon of turmeric is gonna make it super yellow, super vibrant yellow. So after all that talking, I can show you guys. I have one in the refrigerator. So I'll pull it out here. That is what it looks like. So you can see the ridges from using the pan, the tart pan. And this right now is, is stiff um, because it's been in the refrigerator, so it's nice and firm. And uh, so it's got a really strong lemon taste to it and just absolutely delicious. And I know it's kind of hard to see through a computer screen, but this is like nuclear yellow. It's super bright yellow um, because of the turmeric. So, you know, this is something that, you know, when I bring it to parties and potlucks and stuff, then, you know, people always say, wow, what is that? Because it's just really super, um, very vibrant color. So that's the lemon tarts. And how long were those sitting in the fridge? How long do you have to let them chill before they, they get that solid? Um, I usually put them in for uh, half an hour to an hour. Um, they're great. definitely fully cool in an hour. Um, you know, this, this would be something that um, if there's any possibility that you had some left, which I don't even understand that concept, but if you had some left, then you could put them in the freezer and they probably would be okay in the freezer, but really don't wait that long. It's crazy. All right. Uh, so anybody have any questions on that one before I move on to the last recipe that we're going to go over here? And there was a question, I had a couple questions about that recipe. Uh, okay. Uh, there's some folks who are wondering um, if you could add the fruit to the curd after cooking it, but before cooling it, so you uh, didn't cook the, 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 the fruit so much. And, and, you know, what is it that's thickening? What's the process there if you want to do more raw? Oh, um, hmm. Coconut mana would be a... I guess it would be a raw product because it's, it's not being cooked. The thing is, coconut manna is um, usually solid at room temperature, um, which is why in the fridge it, it thickens right up. Um, so it's going to be hard to use that and make it smooth that you can, you know, like when it's cooked on the stove, then I take a spoon and just like kind of spoon it into the little cups here. Um, it would certainly be challenging to make it raw. Um, not impossible, for sure. Uh, I just, I've never tried that before. Um, so lemon juice, you know, putting it in to cook it on the stove, um, you could add it afterwards if you wanted to. Um, you know, you're only heating up the, that, um, the curd enough to be able to make it smooth that you can whisk it and then pour it in. So if you wanted to just add the lemon right at the end, you could certainly do that. And then there was one question about... Um, let's see about the tartlet in the, in the shell. How long do you wait to take the crust? Is it hot when you, I, since you're taking it off the stove, you don't have to wait for it to cool if you're taking it oh, right. out of the oven. Right, but, I, forgot to, I forgot to add that. So um, uh, it is in the, in the recipe too, um, so you have the instructions, but um, when I take it out of the stove after 10 minutes, then I'll usually put that in the refrigerator so that it can cool it down really quickly because you don't want to put the lemon curd in when it's still really hot. Uh, I have done that before and for some reason, as I'm sure there's a good reason for this, but um, the curd doesn't actually stick to the crust itself and then you go to eat it and it just like falls out. So, yeah. You have like curd and crust as two different entities. They're not a, just a combined thing. Okay. Yeah. But this way... And the trick is just to cool it. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. All right. So the last, the last You're recipe... You're making me hungry, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing you already ate. All right, so the last recipe, um, this is one that of any of the desserts that I make, I am most likely to bring this to a potluck. Um, people always love this. Um, so I like to do it in um, mousse cups, which is how the recipe is written. And this recipe is in the cookbook. Um, so what I use for this is uh, I use a, this is a mini cheesecake pan. Uh, so you can see there's, there's, it's empty at the bottom or you can put your fingers through in the bottom. And then you use these little discs 
that sit down on the bottom, right? So um, you make the mousse cups and we'll go over all this, but basically once it's cool and it's in the refrigerator, you can push, you can push up on the little disc and it pushes the tart or the um, cup out. Um, and so you can have it, uh, you know, so this way you can serve it uh, in little mini cups for uh, potlucks and things like that. Uh, you could definitely just use a pie plate. It's totally fine too. Uh, I like to use the, the little mini cups because it kind of gives you a good serving just as it is. Whereas if you have pie, then, you know, you might be more tempted to like slice off a larger piece than, than uh, you know, than my kids maybe. Uh, so um, it really doesn't matter. You can do it in a pie plate too. It's totally fine, but it's just, it's fun to have the little uh, mini cheesecake pan. Um, and I just ordered that online. I think I got it on eBay or something. So, uh, so with this one, again, trying to use whole foods as much as possible. Um, I am using for the crust. I'm going to use three quarters of a cup of uh, pecans for this one. I use one cup of dates a pinch of salt. I do use a teaspoon of vanilla powder. Um, so that's right here. Um, in this recipe, um, I prefer to use the powder rather than the liquid because I'm trying to keep the crust uh, dry and not have it be at all liquidy. But um, vanilla powder, you can certainly use regular vanilla if you wanted to, it's fine. Um, but I like to use the powder for this. So. This one's more of a specialty ingredient. I, I think I got this at Whole Foods. Um, vanilla powder is pretty expensive because it's a really concentrated form of vanilla. Um, but, you know, I don't, I really don't, I don't use it all the time. So, you know, I've had this for months now and, and it's fine, so. Uh, and then I would add three tablespoons of cacao powder. Again, just going for the chocolate base. Um, when I first, uh, uh, had something similar to this, then it was an Oreo uh, cookie um, crust. It was one of those Oreo crusts, and that is great. It it does taste really good. But you know, trying to use a natural form of sweetener and uh, and um, <clears throat> trying to make it healthier. So that's for the crust. And so for that, you know, whether you're using the cups or a pie plate, you're just kind of pressing that down in. You don't have to cook it ahead of time. You don't have to have it set ahead of time. This one works fine um, just once you press it all in. And then for the mousse part of it, um, this is for all the people who say they hate tofu. So if you have someone in your family or your entire family that says they hate tofu, they uh, it tastes disgusting, you don't know what to do with it, um, this is the perfect recipe for that because you are definitely not going to taste the tofu. And the tofu is what makes the texture of this perfect. It gives it a really fluffy, light, um, mousse type consistency. So I'll show you what I use. Um, in this recipe, I use um, mori nu tofu. So this would be something that you'd be more likely to find um, this silken tofu. You would find this in the uh, Asian section of the supermarket. Maybe you may have it there. Um, this is, uh, it's in, a, in an aseptic box. So basically they put all the ingredients in the box and they seal it up and it becomes tofu in the box. Uh, so this is shelf stable. Um, I, I like to use, I get these and then, uh, you know, just have them. I usually have like two or three on my shelf at a time. You know, when I need quick tofu, then this is good. This has a, this is different than the kind of tofu that you would find in the supermarket that's in the water, in the tubs. Um, you know, this silken tofu, it kind of has more of this consistency of like custard uh, rather than something firm that you would cut up into cubes. So um, if you can't find this, um, you can definitely order it online. You can get a bunch of them there. Uh, Whole Foods usually has them. Health food stores usually have them. Um, if you're really in a pinch and you can't find this anywhere, then if you go to the refrigerated section where you would find tofu at the supermarket, uh, sometimes you can find silken tofu, uh, which in that form, it's going to be really soft as tofu, but still not going to be quite the kind of custardy consistency. So if you can definitely 
uh, if you can in any way find this, then I'd say use this um, as a very last resort. You can use um, just regular silken tofu that's in the refrigerator. So I put in one box of the Mori New Tofu. Um, and then in this recipe, I do use, uh, this is one of the few recipes where I, I do actually use chocolate. Um, in this recipe, you want it to be super, super rich. So uh, one thing that I learned a long time ago, I never ever use um, chocolate chips. Uh, chocolate chips, even if you get good quality ones, uh, the uh, actual chocolate content of them is usually like 50%, 55% cacao rating. And, um, you know, it's just, um, it's not very rich. So one secret I learned a long time ago is if you um, buy, you know, really high, if you buy good quality chocolate for something like this, that you're, you know, you're not going to be using this stuff all the time, but if you want something that's super rich and really, you know, wonderful taste, then if you get 85 or 90% cacao bars, um, then use that instead of chocolate chips. Like, forget about chocolate chips. Forget they exist. Um, anytime that I ever use chocolate in any recipe, um, I use uh, high-quality chocolate bars, the 85 or 90% cacao. Um, so I put two bars of the chocolate um, onto a stove, onto uh, low heat, and just kind of melt those. Um, this is all going to go into a blender, the filling. So uh, we have the box tofu. We have the high-quality chocolate bars, two tablespoons of maple syrup or agave, uh, again, it really wouldn't work to put dates in this one. I guess you could use date sugar, but um, again, like I'm not having this for dessert every night. So this one's a little bit richer. And then I'm putting in a quarter of a teaspoon of the espresso powder. So, uh, you know, basically like if you have the pie plate or the, the mini cheesecake things, the cups, um, you make the crust, put that in, and then you use a, a blender or a food processor and you make the uh, chocolate filling, the mousse filling, and then you pour that in, and then you put it in the refrigerator and let it set for about an hour, and then da -da -da -da, you have, by the, by the magic of the internet, <laughs> you have these chocolate mousse cups here. So these ones, you know, I swear... Awesome. Whether you're vegan, vegetarian, not vegetarian, people go crazy for these at parties. Uh, you know, I always get the, the biggest compliments with, with these ones when I bring them. So it's got that, you know, really rich crust base to them. And then the mousse uh, is, is so great. So that is the chocolate mousse recipe. So, you know, I like to show those two recipes because uh, of the crust, you know, to, to those are great examples of whole food crusts where you can skip the usual junk that they put in there, use whole food ingredients. Um, and, you know, the chocolate's not whole food ingredient. But, um, you know, you can take something that is not healthy at all and at least make it somewhat healthier and, you know, feel okay about it. <laughs> all right. So those are the four recipes for tonight, and you have all four of those. Colin, what size chocolate bars? What size chocolate bars are you using? How much, like you, you said use a couple chocolate bars, but I assume, I'm not looking at the recipe right now, but you probably say there, but is it, is it ounces? Do you figure, like how do you measure how much chocolate to use in that? Oh, um, usually I use uh, Lint, um, the L-I-N-D-T. Uh, chocolate bars, which are, I don't know. I don't even know what the, the ounce size is, of, but they're like the regular size chocolate bars. Um, so I, I don't mean the um, the uh, gigantic, uh, you know, four pound Trader Joe's uh, chocolate bars. Not, not what I mean. Okay. Great. <laughs> yeah. So just the regular, yeah, the, the like, how much do those cost? Like four or five bucks uh, per yep. bar? I think that kind of price range. Yeah. Yeah. When somebody is, is chipping in that they, they think that they're 12 ounces. So I'll buy that. Okay. We'll, we'll crowdsource it and say 12 ounces. Yeah. I think uh, for, for the person who was talking about Marshall's before, then um, 
I have seen the lint chocolate bars like at checkout. They have sometimes, sometimes they have it, sometimes they don't. Um, or also at um, Ocean State, I think I've seen them there before. Um, so, you know, maybe not dependably there, but um, sometimes you can find them for like a buck or two per bar. Wow, oh, that's a really good deal. I um I didn't even realize that Lint made a a dairy free chocolate bar. It must be the they super do. intense eighty five ninety percent bars. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's really good to know. Um, people are chipping in the world market. It has a septic tofu. I'm sure you can find it at Can Man and some of the other Asian grocery stores in Quincy too. I was looking for um so for soft tofu for a totally different recipe I was making the other day. Um I don't know if you've ever seen like you don't see many people advertising soft tofu. Um, I was making a mapao tofu, and um, I found that at Kanban, which is really cool. It was similar to Silken, and some people said it was the same as Silken, but um, it was definitely marketed as soft, and it was actually made over in Cambridge. But, yeah, it was cool. Oh, okay. Um, so someone was wondering if you use a lower, if you use a chocolate bar that is a lower quantity of chocolate, um, so if you use, you could only find or, or had on hand a 60 or 70 or 55% or um, bar, um, would you use less sugar? And could you compensate? Uh, I suppose so. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, it wouldn't I, be as rich. Yeah. I am super glad that you came and joined us. Thank you, Colin. Right. Yeah. Um, thank you.